Hello and welcome to Flames TV. I'm your host, Steve Allred. And a very special and personal hello and welcome to any members of our armed forces watching today. Our guest is NHRA Pro Stock Motorcycle star Hector Arana. Hector's a very emotional and passionate guy, and that emotion comes through in this interview. Let's join it now. Hello, Hector, and welcome to Flames TV. Hi there, and I want to welcome you for inviting me over. You've, uh, you've been racing pro stock motorcycles for a long time. Can you give us a brief rundown of your career? Sure. Um, I started in, uh, well, as a kid, I always loved drag racing, but I had a chance um, in the mid-'80s, and uh, I went to the racetrack, and I fell in love with it, and and I pursued it, and uh, worked hard at it, and here I'm in, racing uh, pro stock now professionally. This, uh, as we speak, uh, you're at the racetrack in Indianapolis for the the biggest race of the year, and uh, and and maybe even more importantly, the last race to the countdown to qualify for the countdown. You're less than a round out of the countdown. Is that that's got to be a lot of pressure? Oh, Steve. I mean, I trust me. Be, before even coming to Indy. Uh, the other two races, we had this pressure behind, uh, on, on us and keep thinking about uh, going and, and making runs and winning runs. Yes. And I won Norwalk. Mm -hmm. And after Norwalk, it, it's like I'm trying too hard. And then uh, everyone keeps telling me, man, you got Karen behind you. You got Karen behind you. I don't mean to red light. I, that's the last thing I want to do, but uh, I see the light. And so I let go, and it's some couple of times it's turned red. So I'm going to come over here to Indy. I'm not even going to worry about Karen. I don't care if it's meant to be. That's what it's going to be. And But I, I'll tell you one thing. I'm focused. I've been sitting on the bike practicing, and, and, and I know what I have to do, and so that's what I need to do, concentrate is get all the distraction out of my way so I can do my race and see where the chip lies. A lot easier said than done, but it's, uh, it's, uh, if you can, if you can stick with your, your old routine and, and, and relax and have fun with it, uh, you know, you got to enjoy the moment. I mean, this is what you've been doing uh, this for. It. I enjoy it, but uh, you know what, Steve? There's something else you got, we got to remember here. That Karen's also feeling the pressure mm -hmm. because uh, she knows I got a fast bike, and if I concentrate, if everything lays out right, she can also be uh, out. So the pressure's on both of us, and, and let's see what happens here. Sure, you know. I I don't think television does justice to uh, to watching the pro stock bikes. You accelerate from a standing start to 190 miles an hour in a quarter mile. Can you can you give our viewers just a a little bit of uh, what are the sensations like in doing that? I, I'll tell you, Steve. I get this butterfly, and my stomach turns. I, my my legs shake. I, I'm afraid to run. I think I'm going to fall. <laughs> but once I sit on that motorcycle and we started, oh, my God. I don't know nothing else but just me and the motorcycle. That's all I know. I don't know who's around me. And uh, uh, I stay. And what we need to concentrate here is when you leave, you know, it looks easy, like you say it on TV. It doesn't do justice. It looks like you just see the light and you leave it and that's it. You're stunned. But what they don't realize is you have to concentrate on the light so you can have a good reaction. When you leave, you have to know what the motorcycle is doing and shift at, at the proper RPM and, and keep feeling the bike, make sure that it's not fish tailing, it's not spinning the tire, and go through your shift points. And, and then you cross the finish line. But that's, it's not over yet because now you just transfer all the G's. We pull almost three G's in the starting line. 
And now we reverse all those G's to negative G's and trample all the way to the front tire. And uh, we've got to be careful there until you slow down enough and finally come to a stop. That's when it's over. Man, that, that must really be a rush. So, Hector, do you do your own mechanical work on the bike? Yes, I do. Um, it's a constant job, but I love it. Do you uh, do you build your own engines? Well, um, I get the motor from S and S. You know, everything here is a billet pieces, billet cases, and and uh, so the the abuse that it takes, we have to go over the engine frequently. And yes, I, so I, I I do. I take it all apart. I look things over carefully. And something needs massaging or repair. I I take care of it. But it's not like a, it's not like a some pro stock programs where where competitors lease engines and uh, and all they do is is put them in at the racetrack, take them out, and send them back to the uh, uh, to their lease company. Uh, people like Larry Morgan at the end. You 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 buy your engine and then you do all your work on it. Yes, I I get I buy the engine and then we do the work and and. You mentioned Larry Morgan, and I'm glad you did because he he has helped me too. Um, that's why I sent my head for the bike job to get it done, and I get it back and I put it all back together. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What kind of transmission do you have in 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 your your bike? We we run a six speed Liberty six speed transmission. Is it air shifted? Uh, it's manually shifted. How do you how do you? No, it, it's, it's air shifted. They call it an automatic, mm-hmm. but you still have to uh, shift it. But the benefit of this is when you shift into second gear, second gear, it will not disengage first gear into second gear engages and it spins faster than first, and then it kicks first out. So when you go then into third, just second is still pulling into third, start pulling you overcomes it and then pulls it out mm-hmm. that's why they call it automatic but you still have to manually shift it yourself i understand 